Hey, how are you? It's John from Dowie Farm here. I'm just uh, I'm at the office. I'm uh, hatching some quail eggs in here because uh, we decided to do it here at the grow space instead of uh, instead of at the um, at the house because we get consistent temperatures here at the grow space, so it's easier to keep the incubator in the right spot. Um, as far as temperatures go. So I'm going to kind of show you my setup on my incubator. Sorry about all the extra light. It's kind of like crazy in here. But uh, here's what I got going on. First off, we um, <clears throat> I started out with a little giant, crappy styrofoam incubator. Um, it's not the best incubator in the world. It, uh, you know, it's just kind of average. If you just take that thing out of the box without an egg turner and try to hatch eggs, you're not going to get much. And it's really not worth it. It's kind of silly that they even sell it that way, but um, you really have to add the egg turner. <clears throat> um, and then you either have to add your own fan like I did. Uh, learned from a friend of mine at Will Work for Liberty, another great YouTube channel. But uh, I learned from him how to do it, so I went in and got the stuff that he recommended and I did it. Uh, but I also took it a step further and I put a better uh, temperature controller on it because that little wafer board sucks. So what I've got going on here now, I'll show you as we walk through it if I can easy with the, uh, easier here with the, whoa, with the, um, yeah, the tripod. I might have to take this off the tripod. But I've got my coffee maker. Oh, no, I've got my incubator here. Um, my little giant incubator. And I have an external, um, temperature thing that tells me the outdoor temperature and the indoor temperature and the outdoor temperature is actually my probe um, so that's inside the incubator 98.6 this is kind of off a little I think it's not that it's not 98.6 in there because the other thing I have going on is I have this ink bird it is a ink bird oh what's the name of the do 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 yeah what do we got TC something 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 it's TC I don't know I don't know, I'll link to it. But the one I have cools as well. Um, that's all I could find at the time. They have one that's for incubators. It's probably a better deal. And uh, it's a little cheaper. It's like five bucks less. And uh, I'll link to both of those things. But um, for 35 bucks, you can buy this thing here that will control temperature on a probe. And I it doubles up for me. I use it to control my um, stock tank heaters in the winter because those things will just run until the water reaches like 70 degrees or something like that, which is not necessary. So uh, I set that thing up so that when the ambient temperature is like 34, 36, it turns off, or I don't know, something like that. I don't know, whatever, I wing it. But like, you know, I'll have it turn on when it hits 34, I'll have it turn off when it hits 36. That way, like obviously the ambient temperature isn't freezing, your water isn't gonna freeze, right? Especially since it's on the ground, it's not, you know, usually not frozen underneath there. <clears throat> but anyway, I'm going to walk you through what he did here. I've got my Inkbird temperature adjuster, and right next to that thing is my awesome flowchart that comes in the thing. Uh, so as you can see on this, this bad boy, let me see if I can get it in the shop best here. The way to set this, I'll walk you through. I set these things to, ready? Let me see if I can get my, my thing out here. I set my temperature set value here, okay, to 101. All right, and then I know that sounds high because what you want with ink with, with quail eggs, you want 99.5 uh, consistently, but you're never going to get that with this wafer board. The closest you're going to get is with this this temperature controller. That's what I found. Um, so I set that to 101, and then what I do is it wants a heating differential, which means it's going to go off. Uh, it's going to turn on when it's off by this much. I set that to one because I want it to just go one degree, and as you see. As you were looking at it, it dropped down to 100, and the heating light turned off, <clears throat> or it hit 100. I might have it set to 100 right now, actually, because it's warm in here. Then the cooling differential doesn't matter, because you're not using that. The alarm is super annoying, and I thought it was going to be a good idea, but I ended up turning that stuff off. <laughs> so I set the alarm high limit, as high as it would go, and I set the alarm low limit, as low as it would go, so that it never goes off, because it goes off all the time for some reason. It's wicked annoying. Um... Compressor delay, not important with this because you're not running a refrigerator because this is kind of built to run a cooler for like a uh, home brewing and whatnot. Your temperature calibration is so that you can t you can test it and a cup of ice water should be 36 degrees. I don't know, you can Google that. I think it's 36 degrees for a cup of ice water with a lot of ice. Um, and you can drop your probe in there 
and it'll let you adjust, all right? And then you can do Fahrenheit or the other thing. So uh, <laughs> we do Fahrenheit here. But anyway, you're going to hold this button down until it goes to that, and that's TS, and that's your temperature set value, and I do have it at 100. And you're going to go up and down, and then you're going to hit set, and your differential is 1 degree, and you're going to hit set, and your cooling differential doesn't matter, and your alert high is at 240. So if the incubator hits 248 degrees everything's cooked and then minus 38 and so on and then my compressor delays at three uh, it doesn't matter because that's that's connected to cooling so that doesn't matter i'm not using cooling it has this plug the an outlet you plug into the heating side obviously and you don't bother with the cooling side and then here's your probe now with your probe let's see if we can use this this ooh, yeah funky sorry guys i'm bad at this uh <laughs> You run it through the hole in your incubator. Now, here's the deal with this whole setup. If you're gonna, if you don't own an incubator yet, don't do this, right? Because, like, you can get all this in a better situation for the for the money, right? Because I'm at 35 bucks on a controller. I believe you're at 40 just for the basic incubator, and if you get the Turner with it and all the quail rails for this situation, you're already at like 100 bucks. Like, so you're at like 150 bucks or something to to make this work like this, right? just not worth it buy a good incubator for 150 bucks and said but i bought this by mistake and said hey let's see what we can do so then i got this nifty little fan controller it's a speed controller i just crank it all the way and then i'm gonna open this for you which is like kind of a no-no because we are in the early days he's been in here since sunday and today is thursday so um i'm gonna kind of open this up well and what i do is i just crank the temperature all the way by the way so that's up all the way and then this is just going to turn it off and on right so inside here, I have bootlegged in a fan. If I can open this stupid thing. There we go. See the fan spinning there? It's just a computer fan. And it's like hooked to a little uh, whatever amperage, uh, a frame crema, the plug-in thing. All right. Uh, the hell's it called? Whatever. Doesn't matter. Anyway, then I set my eggs. I got 80 eggs set in here. Nice, nice big quail eggs off my thing, 15, 16 grams. These are the quail rails. This is the turner, very important. These It comes with regular rails for duck and chicken eggs. And you got to buy these quail rails to fit quail eggs. And then in the bottom, there's reservoirs for water. I took a hot glue gun, and I sealed up the holes so it won't leak on me, and I can get more water in because with quail eggs, let me close this. You want to set your eggs, and you want to not do what I just did. You want to set your eggs and lock it down, man. And you don't want to open this thing up. See, it just dropped to 93.86, whatever now. Anyway, and it's going to go up pretty quick, so it's not that big of a deal. But you don't want to open that and be messing around with it and candle eggs, all that BS. Like, just skip that shit, right? Put your eggs in there. Close it up. Put some water in that stupid thing. Call it a day. Like, don't worry about your humidity until your last, like four or five days, right? These quail eggs take 18 days. So I'm two weeks and I'm just like, whatever. I put some water in there, call it a day, get the temperature right. That's your thing. You just want your consistent temperature, right? And I get about an 80% hatch rate out of this little crappy incubator by doing this, right? So I throw my eggs in, I lock it down for two weeks, usually, <laughs> and then uh, water in the beginning, temperature at set at 100. So it bounces what it does because of that one degree differential, right? I'm at 100, it's going to go 99 to 101, 99. And it's going to average out at 99.5-ish, right? So we're good. And at day 8, no, sorry, 15, I'm going to take, I have a second one actually for this, but I'm going to take the uh, turner out and just lay the eggs in there on their side. And that's when they're in the hatch mode because you don't want them in the turner hatching to get the legs caught in and stuff like that. So, um, <clears throat> so I'm going to yank that turner out. They're pick it up, lift it out, take the eggs, set them back in there. And then I'm going to jack up the humidity, right, when I do that. So I'm going to take sponges and, like, all kinds of shit like that, washcloths, whatever I can find. And I'm going to layer them into the bottom underneath that screen. Then I'm going to do – I'll do a follow-up on this when I do that that day. Um, and I'm going to soak them. And you want to – you just want that humidity to go as high as you possibly can in the end, just in the end, all right? And that, that'll keep them from sticking to the, uh, the the membrane and all that stuff, and it helps them out, helps them get out. Then what I do once they start to hatch is I go in there once a day, maybe twice a day if there's a ton of them, and I just pick them out. The only thing that freaks me out about leaving them in there is, like, there's that fan. <laughs> I want to pop their little, especially quail, 
pop their little head up in the fan. It's probably a bad idea. Hasn't happened yet, luckily. And I'm also, I worry a little bit the heating element. So I get them out pretty often and I throw them into a tote. We'll get into that stuff. Uh, I'm going to do another video, a follow-up. This is my first part one of setting up the shitty little giant incubator and getting your eggs set up uh, is what this is. And then I'll do a part two when I move them to the hatcher. And uh, I never candle these things, all right? And because, like, it's a waste of time. Everybody talks about, oh, the eggs could blow up. Come on. I've never had it happen. I've incubated a lot of times. I've never had an egg explode unless you leave it in there way too long. So you should be fine. And you'll start to get a little smell. And you can usually sniff out the bad one if you're gonna when you're doing the, the transfer. Uh, so, but I just leave them. Anyway, that's where I'm at. I'm at 11 minutes here. Sorry, guys, for the long videos. I know, you know, it's like a big YouTube no-no or some some dumb something like whatever. I don't care. Uh, so uh, that's my walkthrough on the Inkbird. I'll link to that thing. Uh, my Amazon links are down right now because they don't like me. And uh, I'm gonna I'll throw some of the other stuff that I have in there. Uh, the only thing I'm missing in this setup right now that I need to get in there. Um, that I realized I lost is my hygrometer to tell me what the humidity actually is. But I, by the little droplets on the top, I'm thinking it's pretty good. And uh, like I said, at this point in day three, four, five, whatever, up to about day 12 to 15, it doesn't matter anyway. Thanks for watching. John from Dowie Farm. Take it easy.